you what? I divide. But after I do this, I want you to look back on it and tell me what you think if I could have stopped there. So I'll take this two. And I'll do that. Now what's this one half to you replace? Now I'm going to put the original problem over here. All right, what's this one half to you replacing? One one half a D U. Uh, that two stays. That's a number, it stays. But what replaces this two Y plus one? U. Yeah. So let me write this again. There's a two up there. Where can I put the half? In front. In front? All right, one half in front. This two is sitting up here in the numerator. And I've got a U to a 6 down in the bottom, right, I'm sorry, and then I've got a DU, right? Now, I think you all know this. What's 1 half times a 2? 1. So shouldn't we do that right away? Th I mean, think about it. We all can see this. What's 1 half times a 2? Just a what? Just 1. So let me write this again and just put 1 over 1. You all see that? Right? I can multiply that half to the 2. So Josephine, I don't want to confuse you or anybody, but I want you to see something. Doesn't that mean, see the original problem? Doesn't that mean if you wanted to, those in this class who are, who are really good at this stuff, you might have looked at step two and said, oh, I could have stopped right here, and I could have replaced what with the du in the original problem? The dy and the what? Two. Do you see that? You might have done that. So Josephine, I always just go to step three, divide the concept, but you might observe and go, well, well hold up. 2D, this had a 2 already in a DY. Mm -hmm. Might as well just replace that with a DU in step 2. Like bell rash. Feel free to do stuff like that, right? Sometimes you can stop at step 2 if you got... This is already there. I'll just replace it with a DU. But we'll get it anyways. Now, how do you do these integrals? There's no quotient rule. Negative 6. U to a negative 6. <coughs> now, R is my memory. Here, we're talking about this. you got to pump this up by one integer and then divide by that number. Mm -hmm. The only thing is be careful with the number line. If you take negative 6 and you add 1, negative 5. Negative 5. All right, so here we go. This becomes u to the negative 5 over negative 5 plus c. c. Now, what was u? 2y plus 1. So, u was 2y. I'll put my parentheses back. See? To a negative fifth over negative 5 plus c. Um, you might prefer to write this in this manner. When you write final answers, it's not the best idea to leave negative exponents in your final answer. It's good to write your final answer with positive exponents. So how can I write that? Negative 1. Think oh. 1 in the numerator. There's a negative 5 here. I can put the negative in with the 1 if I want. I'll keep the 5 here. And then next to this 5, I'll put 2y plus 1 to a positive 1. go like this. But, yeah, if you were wondering, would I accept that? I would. Because <laughs> it says, you know, evaluate the indefinite. It didn't say anything about don't leave negative exponents. Well, I think it's good to do this because a lot of times we are doing definite integrals. And isn't that easy if it said go from y equal to 0 to y equals 1? Right? Is that what I got this? By the way, we haven't done a definite integral in about a half hour, so maybe you should do one. Ready? Coming off, Amber, this is going to have numbers. No constant. Zero to one. What does that mean? What happened when I got all the way to here? That means there's not going to be a C. And what can I put right here? One, two, that means right over here. Oh, okay, so if there's Ooh. numbers, then you just do that line. And do now wait to the end, right? What goes right here? Just the line, and then one. And, and these were Y's. Is that one great? Mm -hmm. Although art, art might change them and put the U's here. Yeah. You make the two new use here. I'm just going to bypass that. Keep waiting, keep waiting, get to the end, get to the end. Here I am. I have to substitute what number? One for what? Y, then I have to substitute a zero, and then I have to do what with these? Subtract it? All right, here we go. I went negative one fifth times, what's two times one plus one? To the fifth. 3 to the power of 5th, oh, right? Be huge. 
Way to go, messenger. You it's, it's, you're sort of that dude. Tough one to put numbers. <laughs> that, that would have been easier. What about you to do? Yeah, it's got a good point. <laughs> uh, we got to do three to the fifth power. What's that? Two forty-three. Then we got to multiply by five. All right, great. Hey, I'll, I'll I'll get back to this. Now we do a subtraction, and then I put in what number? Zero. Right? Just always a subtraction. Then I put in a zero. Subtraction negative one over five times two times zero plus one to the well, when this is negative 1 over whatever, 12, 5 12, times 12, 15. 12, 15. How much is that? 1,000? 12, 15. 12, 15. Minus? Well, that is fi 5. 5 times 32? No, not 8. 2 to the over 0 is 0. Plus 1. Yeah, yeah so one negative 1 fifth. One negative 1 fifth, yep. Now when I subtract these, I have to do common denominator, don't I? Yeah, so I, I can do that for you. One. And we want to do it for them? Oh, we're going to invest that. I mean, he's going to subtract these. I could have done it now. So, I love it. Everyone, oh, I sure. did that on purpose. So, thank you. See the negative, negative? Yeah. Kel, who else saw that? Very good. Kel saw it. I heard some other voices. Thank you. This minus minus makes it a what? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That comes to 242 over 1215. Thanks, Art. No problem. Hey, could you check any definite integral with the calculator? Can't we? Can't we check every depth with the TI-83 and 84? Yeah. So you can check that, right? Oh, good, she snapshot. I got video camera. <laughs> <laughs> you get it? Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Evan, did I do a secant with a tan yeah. yeah. Here's a tough one. Give it a couple stars. Tuffy. You know why? Secant cube x? Because what's the derivative tan? So you and I have to figure out some way to do this problem. We can do it. You can do well, secant, we can do secant squared x times secant x. Divide it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Make a new substitution for secant x. I like this. I like the way you're all thinking. Everyone, how about this? We know the derivative tangent is what? Secant squared x. Secant squared, right? But that going in, it's a secant what? Cube. But can we rewrite this? This is what I'm here for, everyone. Can I think of this as tangent of x times a secant of x times a what? Secant squared of x. Secant squared of x. Can I think of it that way? Uh -huh. Right? Can I do it that way? Yes. Now, if I let u equal tangent, it doesn't work. And I want you to see why. But don't get, don't get too worried about it. Okay? Watch this. I'm going to put my sad face on. This isn't going to work here, and then I'll get your question, Josephine. I'm, I'm playing around with this, trying to figure out what to do. Do not think the first time you see this, it should just come natural. Because we look at this and we go, you know, you, you try something, right? Mm -hmm. Now you do a substitution rule. Josephine, I'll get your question seven. I'm like, I'm just going to try something. I know about this, right? I know about these. So I'm just going to think, well, that's that. But I notice this isn't going to work because... When I get here, all I get is the what? Secant squared dx. And I notice when I go substitute, I'll be able to knock that out. I'll be able to knock that out, but what will still be sitting around? Secant x. So does anybody know another <coughs> relationship with secant and tan with derivatives? Isn't there one that has it as tan x? Oh, you nailed it. What's the derivative of secant of x? Secant what? X tan x. This is going to get us through this problem. And when we're like, we, don't, we know that the cotangent, cosecants don't come up too often, but we know the derivative of secant is what? Holy cow, everyone, what if you look at these together? Maybe I should write it that way. Here. Can we write it that way? Mm -hmm. Let's write this as secant x what? And let's write this thing like this. Oh, this is going to be a piece of cake now. It wasn't working before. And don't worry, that's, that's the fun part of math. I tried something, it didn't work anymore. 
Well, let me try something with the secant secant tan. Remember I tried to let u equal tangent? It wasn't going to work there. T tangent cubed. It wasn't working. But now I looked at this like this. And I'm like, what if I just let u equal who? Now don't say secant squared. That'll get too complicated. You secant squared, you're going to get a crazy product rule up here, or chain rule. We're just saying just let u equal simply what? Secant of x. Your u is usually something really simple. Now what's that derivative? x tan x. dx. And when there's no step three this time, is there? So what's this going to replace? That's so going to knock out the... Secant x tan x and dx. Yep. So now I'm going to go in here. Here we go. This is replacing the what? What's going in there? You. You? Mm -hmm. But the squared stays. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. This is just replacing the U, okay? No constant, so I didn't go to step three. What's DU replacing? D the U secant X, tan X, the tan X, and the DX. DX. And I'll just put down a simple DU. Let me write this again. I've got an integral of a u squared du. We got it. What's the integral of u squared now? u to the 3 over 3. Yep. And then put your u back. What was u? Oh, it's a big cubic. Now, are you one of these that likes to put the cube here? Mm -hmm. Remember, you can do Oh, good. You like to do it. The book, you can do that. It all, or what's another one? Second x cube. Cube. I get worried when I just write it like this, students think they have to, or they don't make sense of it. It's mean the same. What do y'all think? Not bad, huh? Don't be afraid when you try something that doesn't work. You go to another one, right? Cool. Hey, uh, let's do another one with a fraction. Let's, let's jam a radical in there. Sound good? <laughs> All right, fraction, we're going to jam a big radical in there, and you're, you're going to tell us what to let u equal to. Now here, you go, I don't know, sometimes, you don't know what to do. Some suggestions, sometimes it's, uh, it's the exponent, or it's the thing under the radical, or it's the thing in the parentheses. And when there's power differences, it's the one with the power difference, higher power by one. And when in doubt, just try something. Right? <laughs> doesn't work, try something else. All right, here you go. <coughs> Five, five. Let's just throw some crazy radical down here. Um, can I use T? Mm -hmm. All right, T cubed. Let's jam some big radical down here. Uh, let's stick this to the fourth power. No. Sixth power. Okay. Crazy radical. Six root, right? And then for this part, how about one plus? This thing looks crazy. So you sub, what do you think we'll let u equal to? One, one plus t4. One plus t to the fourth. It was the thing under the radical, right? And sure enough, what's the derivative of a t to the fourth? Four. Four t to the one. Two. And I'm not so worried about the four, but you'll get a t q, which is going to knock out the one. Do you see how I set up this problem? You saw me making up. Do you see that? I made sure when I was setting this up, Kayla, I was like, I'll make that power difference with that one a difference by what? One. I wasn't worried about that thing. I wasn't worried about that at all. That could have been a 12. That could have been a square root. Okay, but I was making sure when I designed this for the class, for learning about substitution rule, on the purpose, I made that a power difference by one. So we go off to the side, u equals 1 plus t to the fourth. Not just t to the fourth, the 1 plus t to the fourth. Alright, what's DU? Good, 4T cubed D1. Alright, step one. Step two. The other students who can do all this stuff in their head. You go, which students? Probably you. You'll probably get to the point where you get tired of writing this every time. I'm serious. You'll be in calc two and just go, 
in your head, you'll kind of see all this happening and you'll go back in and change everything. I'm serious. Step that I get a constant, I'm going to have to what? <coughs> uh, one fourth du. TQVP. getting replaced. It's wrong. Good job. U's coming in for the for the kill. Bye bye. You just what letter? But this radical with the sixth root there stays. What's this one fourth D U replace? And we'll replace the T cube and the D T. Alright, then you're out. One fourth, I'll put here because it just felt like it. <laughs> and dt there. Now, right away, where do we put this one fourth? Can we do that? Yeah, shove it out of here. One fourth. Wait a Get it all away. Oh, it's a d. Oh, du, you're the best. Thank you so much. We changed t to be used. So I'll put the one fourth there. I'll keep the du off to the side. I've got a one now in the numerator. But this sixth root got really small mm -hmm. now. This just had what little letter? Mm -hmm. Now, how do you integrate this? One sixth, two to the one sixth. Yep, we put it back to exponential form, right? Yeah, that's u to one sixth. And if we bring it up to the numerator, u to the negative, negative one sixth. Of course, this answer is going to look bizarre because everyone, when you add a 1 to a 1 6, negative 1 6, excuse me, negative 1 6 plus 6 6 is what? 5 6? Six? 5 6, yep. And you have to. Here we go, let's be careful. Six, 1 4 u to the 5 6. R is my, here I go, I'm dividing a 5 <coughs> 6, but divide 5 6 in math means. Reciprocal, so 6 feet. Multiply the six, reciprocal 6. Yes. So